We are back with a brand new video. What is good, Heat Nation? And yes, as you guys can probably tell, I am so, so heated right now. Like, I, I, y'all don't even know um, how mad I am and how hard that game was to watch because uh, it's from the second quarter onwards, bro, that game was an absolute garbage fest. Like, I don't know what was going on. Um, turnover after turnover, missed defensive rotation after missed defensive rotation. Bad shot after bad shot, missed free throw after missed free throw, getting out rebounded every single time. Every time it looked like we made a nice defensive stop, they got the offensive rebound. That was ugly. It was ugly. I'm not gonna lie. And um, yeah, I mean, before we get into it, make sure y'all drop a like. I guess subscribe to the channel if you guys are new, because uh, if you guys want to see an epic rant, that's this is not this is not the video for me ranting because it's the first game of the season. I'm not gonna be you know trying to say the season's over all this other stuff because i've seen a lot of people overreact to games before i'm not going to be one of them but i will give my opinion and if you, if you guys want to um you know hear my opinions about the heat make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you guys are new um yes i know bulls nation y'all probably going to be in my comments you know trolling me and saying ah, i told you so blah 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 and yeah i probably did underestimate your team i'm not gonna lie i, I will admit it you know like i I really thought that the Heat would come come out and take care of business, especially, you know, um, against a team that we have consistently beaten, especially last season. We, we really dominated the Bulls every time we played them last season. And especially without their star player uh, or one of their star players in Levine um, and uh, without Lonzo, I really thought that this would... I, I didn't think it was going to be an easy game, but I didn't think we were going to lose. Like, I, I was really surprised that we lost. I'm not going to lie. Um... But yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, the NBA is full of surprises and um, DeMar DeRozan killed us, man. I mean, I don't even have to look at the box score. He had almost a 40 piece and he was hitting fadeaways over double teams and all the tough shots we're accustomed to see him hitting. He was hitting them. Plus, he was hitting threes. When he starts hitting threes, you know, it's over because it's like, bro, like, like once DeMar DeRozan starts hitting threes, like you cannot really do much to stop him because he's already gotten a rhythm at that point. But um yeah man i mean i think that uh it was a very frustrating watch i'm not gonna lie um and there were a lot of times where i just wanted to you know close my laptop and turn the game off but uh as the heat always do they, they always make it interesting they, they cut the deficit and um they gave me some hope and in the fourth quarter they cut it to four at one point and after that the bulls called timeout and really took control of the game from there man um yeah, it was such a frustrating watch. Uh, like I said, I do have some stuff to talk about. Like I said, I'm not going to be ranting and saying, you know, uh, trade this guy, fire this guy. I'm not I'm not that type of person, especially after one game. Um, so if you're looking for that, you're not going to find it here. But there are some players that I do want to, you know, uh, question. And number one is Kyle Lowry. I'm sorry, bro. Uh, I really like you. And uh, obviously, like, you know, you were a big reason. Um, as to why we were the number one seed last year, but um, he, he looked terrible. He looked so bad. Like I, I could not believe that, that that was Kyle Lowry today. He looked so cooked, and um, he looked washed, bro. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not saying he is washed, but he, that's what he, I'm just saying. What he looked like uh, today, he was just not the, any. There was nothing from today's play uh, that showed me that Kyle Lowry. Um, can have a bounce back year or can be anything close to what he was in Toronto because he was terrible. He was so bad. Dragic outplayed him and we traded Dragic for Lowry plus plus Preston Zachua. I'm not even getting into that trade because I know a lot of people be like, oh, we lost the trade, which we might have. But we have Lowry now. We're probably going to be stuck with Lowry for a while because his contract is so big and no one's probably going to take him. Um, so it's, it's frustrating, man. He's going to have to play better. He absolutely stank up the stank up the court tonight. He didn't do anything. Um, like he literally didn't do anything. Like especially because I know a lot of people are gonna get on Bam, but the thing about Bam is I can I can be fine with Bam's performance because he was trying. You know what I'm saying? Like he did not stop shooting and he was missing a lot of makeable shots. Like a lot of his misses were at the rim. Um, so like to me, I'm not as mad at, at Bam as I am at Lowry because Lowry literally just didn't try. And when he did try, it was like lackadaisical. Like he was turning the ball over too much. Like, bro, I'm sorry. Like he, he was the worst player on the court tonight. Um, Jimmy and Tyler really carried us in the first half. 
Um, but in the second half, like in the third quarter, they did do their parts, but I was just very frustrated that it took Spo that long to sub them in because I felt like in the fourth quarter, the game was already getting out of hand and he subbed them in very late. And um, it was very, very frustrating to see. I know Spo is probably the best coach in the league, but I still think he should have subbed them in earlier um, just because we were down by like double digits and having Duncan Robinson being the ball handler out there wasn't really making sense to me. Um, again, we were without Oladipo, so I expect this second unit to be run by Gabe Vincent, but he didn't really have a great game either. Like the leading score off the bench was Struess with I think 11 points or something like that. The bench was the bench was awful. I'm not gonna lie. Dwayne Dedman had a couple of plays here and there, but like apart from that, like he was just again in foul trouble. We all know Dwayne Dedman loves to foul people, and it's it's very frustrating, Dwayne, because you know he commits a lot of fouls where it's like, bro, you play so so good defense, and at the last second you leave your feet. Because I, I remember there was one play where I think Drummond had the ball like we had defended so well Drummond had the ball Dwayne Dedman left his feet with one second left on the shot clock and and he picked up his like third foul or something like those are the type of plays that you have to avoid if you're Dedman because that's what gets you into foul trouble all the time um so yeah I mean I think that um I, I mean I just I just think that it was a it was a it was a rushy performance from a lot of players you know even Bam like like I said um I don't think Bam had the best game but you know, I didn't expect him. I didn't expect everyone to be perfect. You know, I knew there was going to be some rustiness in the first game of the season. Uh, but Bam was missing dunks. He was missing layups. He was missing wide open floaters. Like, I know for a fact that Bam is not going to shoot like this very often. So I'm not really mad at Bam's performance because, like I said, it was a lot of makeable shots. It's not like Bam was missing a bunch of threes like 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 he's not accustomed to taking. Like, he was missing a lot of shots that he that he makes. So like, I'm not too mad at Bam's performance obviously i am because like you know we lost the game but i don't think this is going to be a, like a reoccurrence or anything like that so um I, I think i think i think that i think that um he will be okay you know in, in, in a couple of in a couple of uh games i think he'll be good once he gets his rhythm hero again was really good in the first half in the second half didn't really you know find his footing again they sent two at him a lot and you know that really slowed him down um, and also, he didn't really get too many minutes in the fourth. Same with Jimmy. Like, the thing about Jimmy that frustrated me was that Jimmy was playing really well. He was getting to the free throw line. But the thing about Jimmy and the difference between what the Bulls did with DeRozan and what we did with Jimmy was that the Bulls literally ran their offense through DeRozan. And we could have done the same thing with Jimmy. But a lot of the times, I just saw him in the corner just, just standing there. Like, Jimmy Butler is not an effective player in the corner standing around. He, like, he needs the ball in his hands. So... I don't understand. There was a lot of possessions where Caleb Martin was at the top of the key, dribbling the ball for five seconds, not knowing what to do. When we have Jimmy Butler as 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 one of the best isolation players in this league sit, sitting on the wing, it's like, bro, give the ball to Jimmy and play through our star because that's what the Chicago Bulls did throughout the whole game. And that's what won them the game. DeMar DeRozan killed us. So, um, yeah, it's like we got to play through our stars more, man. Like I, I love our role players, but, you know, but when the going gets tough, you got to give the ball to your best player. And um, again, that ties into what I said about subbing Jimmy Butler in early. Like, I think he should have been in the game a lot earlier than when he did come into the game, um, you know, uh, in the fourth quarter. Um, next, turnovers. I, again, it, it was the first game of the season. I don't expect there to be this many turnovers again. It was a very, very sloppy, you know, um, sloppy affair from the from the heat they were turning the ball over a lot a lot of that was lowry though like a lot of that was like you know balls going through people's hands and you know just a lot of miscommunication people not being on the same page that happens you know again it is the first game of the season i keep saying this um but the thing that i would not accept is getting out rebounded like that like i don't even know the numbers but it felt like every time we got a defensive stop the bulls got the offensive rebound and it was like, bro, it's so frustrating to watch because, and it's demoralizing for a team. It is so demoralizing for a team when um, you play the best defense that you possibly can. And at the end, the other team ends up with the offensive rebound and an easy putback layup. And a lot of this is because Bam Adebayo gets switched onto the perimeter. And once he's switched onto the perimeter, you have a team that's basically 6'6 six, six or 6'7 six, and under on the court. And they're, they're, their big is still in the paint. So it's like, you can't really, you know, 
you have to be able to battle down low. Like, I don't really know if there's like a situation to combat them getting offensive rebounds all the time because your center is switched onto the perimeter. But I think it's just a matter of boxing out and sending multiple bodies. As soon as, as, soon as the shot is put up, you know, we cannot just have the point guard trying to box out the big. Two, three guys have to be able to be in position to get the offensive rebound because when they have one seven footer over there, it is very easy for him to get the rebound over our point guard. So I, I need to see a couple of guys be committed to getting the defensive rebound and crashing the defensive glass because that really killed us today. Um, another thing that killed us, missed free throws. I think, in the, especially in the fourth, we missed a ton of free throws. I think Bam missed one, Struess missed two, Jimmy missed one. Like, we missed we missed a lot of free throws, and, you know, that could have cut the deficit uh, to, to uh, again, a, a, a better margin for us. But, again, it's not it's nothing major. It's just about making free throws. Um, defensively, we were all, like, out of sync tonight. Um, our rotations were a step slow every time. Um, and I could attribute that, uh, attribute that to the fact that it was the first game of the regular season again. But at the same time, this is the Miami Heat. We are expected to be in the best shape possible. And our, our rotations are expected to be in, in, in tip top condition. And they were not tonight. We were a step slow every time. And um, it felt like DeMar was toying with us. Like every time he had the ball, they were hunting the mismatch. And I love Caleb. I tweeted like I really liked how Spo was throwing him into the fire, but he was getting cooked. And you know this is this is what happens. Caleb, I think, had a really impactful first quarter, but once they started going at him defensively, he kept doing the inexperienced things that he, that that any young player would do. He kept leaving his feet on the pump fakes and doing everything like if you were asked to guard anyone, you know, um, the 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 one of the last players you'd want to guard on your um, starting debut for this team is DeMar DeRozan because DeMar DeRozan will pump fake you to death and if you jump once he's going to draw the foul. He, it's very similar to Kobe. Uh, rest in peace to the Mamba but um, yeah I mean I think that um, for Caleb it was a good experience getting thrown into the fire like that but um, I was very surprised that he didn't take Caleb off of him and put Jimmy on him uh, sooner because Caleb was really getting um, taken to school by DeMar. I'm not going to lie. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see, um, you know, how Spo adjusts from this loss. Again, like our schedule, like I said, it does not get any easier. We play the Celtics, who looked extremely good in their opening performance against the Sixers. Like, both Tatum and Brown had 35 each, and Brogdon did pretty good off the bench. Like, they, they looked extremely good. They looked like the best team um, in the East um, so far. In, in, their, in their first game so it's not going to get any easier we're going to have to be able to weather the storm um, hopefully Oladipo you know or Yurtsev seven return um, again like the bench unit is very very thin with Hero in the starting lineup and that's what I'm very very concerned about is because whenever these whenever our you know scores are on the bench it's very hard for us to generate offense because our bench unit doesn't really have the scoring which is why I'm hoping Oladipo when he's fully healthy can be that spark but as of right now we're just gonna have to figure it out without him and um yeah again very frustrating loss um but it's still a very long season there's still 81 games left i expect this team to bounce back it's always been in their dna um and i think i think we will bounce back um against the celtics again my preview will come out again for the celtics game tomorrow night but um yeah we're gonna wrap it up here man very disappointing loss um and i think we will play better against boston even though they're probably a better team than chicago i think we will bounce back and spo will try to figure some stuff out but um without zach levine and lonzo um it's super disappointing that we were that we lost this game because they were playing without two of their three best players and um or two of their four best players and uh we just look lost out there uh, at times so um yeah we'll, we'll see what happens but um, we're going to wrap it up here. I'll see you all later as always. Peace.